other centuries. Above the altar is the Paladoro, the great altar screen created by Venetian and Byzantine goldsmiths. Beneath the altar lies the tomb of Saint Mark, the sacred heart of the city. But this place is more than an expression of religious devotion. For it was here that the authority of the Doge received divine sanction. In the nave sit two great pulpits. One pulpit was reserved for religious addresses. The other was for the doge. This is where he would address the people of Venice, where he stood to proclaim, Venice would submit to no one, emperor, king or pope. The exterior is an extraordinary confection Venetian ornament mixes with precious objects from overseas. In 1075, the Doge had proclaimed it was the duty of every traveling Venetian to bring treasures back to adorn the facade. But it is the domes of St. Mark's that give it such a memorable skyline. Those famous eastern-looking onion domes were put on later. They are made of wood and covered by lead. The real stone domes, much flatter and less eye-catching, are hidden underneath. St. Mark's set the mood for Venice to be the most sensational stage set the world had ever seen. Its religious and political centerpieces proclaim the city's independence and growing confidence. Its people had transformed from fishermen into merchants. Now, merchants would become princes of trade. The early wooden houses replaced by brick and stone palaces. Modern Venice was beginning to take shape. It was around this time my family became successful merchants and decided to build a grand house. It is the oldest palazzo to survive on the Grand Canal. Now it is rotting and one of the saddest sights of the city. It breaks my heart. This palace is called Cadamosto. It was built by my family in the 13th century. And my ancestor lived here nearly 400 years, until 1603, when it was bequeathed to another family. I've driven past it a thousand times, but I've never been inside. If I have to be sincere, I'm a little shy to come inside this place. Because I've always seen this house from outside. The mask that normally the public sees. It's difficult to enter a world where you have never been before. A place you know all the people of your family lived over many centuries. It's quite a strange sensation. Something that gives you a feeling of all the history on your shoulders. You think of who you are in this moment of your life. My family didn't just live in this house. They did business here.
they used their house as a warehouse, a showroom, and a place to make money, and a landing stage. Because the most profitable goods were from overseas, so a successful merchant had to be a sailor too. When this house was first built, it would have been a more modest building, just two stories high, but it stood at the very hub of the city. It was here that merchants built their boats, ready to travel ever greater distances across the seas. These merchant sailors had to be ready to defend themselves. Their boats, loaded with valuable goods from around the Mediterranean, had to fight off pirates and foreign rivals. The Venetian merchant traders became feared as the ablest military seamen of the age. Trade, something of a dirty word in the rest of Europe, was a noble occupation in Venice. And one merchant will become more famous than any other. His name was Enrico Dandolo. And his story would become linked with the fate of this city. It began with a gross act of violence against the people of Venice. Violence that would come from an unexpected source. By the 12th century, the Venetians had trading posts all over the Mediterranean. Most profitable of all were the trading links with Byzantium, and in particular, its capital city of Constantinople. Byzantium had influenced events in Venice for centuries. But now, power had shifted, and Venice was gaining the upper hand. This was the old Venetian quarter in Constantinople. 10,000 Venetians lived and worked here. First, they were invited here to trade, but slowly, they were taking over and getting rich. The Byzantines were not happy. The Byzantine emperor had given them permission to live in a confined area of warehouses and wharves by the sea wall. But more and more, the Venetian merchants spread throughout the city. This all became too much for the Byzantine authorities. The Venetians were buying up their houses and marrying their women. And on one quiet night in March 1171, something happened. 